Hey, brothers and sisters, welcome back to another show of Will Tell Truth. This is an interview podcast. We keep it organic and natural, and uh, we dive deep into some topics. So today, I have a uh, special guest. My my good buddy, Boomer Barry, is on the line. How you doing, brother? I'm doing phenomenal. Thanks so much for having me. Awesome, man. Yeah, you know, we, we connected, and I'm very grateful for that, from uh, a very special person connected us. So, uh, and then, you know, we, we started chatting and just hit it off and we're very much on the same wavelength and, uh, that's great. So I'm glad we're doing this chat, man. Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, it's fun to be able to get somebody that you can just share openly and freely and, um, share ideas without, you know, attacking one another and just kind of bouncing ideas and trying to learn and grow. Absolutely, man, for sure. It's all about inspiration. Try to get, you know, have a chat. And um, like you said, this was your first time doing a video chat. And that that's perfect. That's we're trying to inspire people to come out and, and have public conversations to, uh, to inspire and influence others. So this is awesome. I'm very grateful you're coming on. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, man. So maybe uh, let's dive into your story, if you don't mind, um, as much as you want to talk about. And, uh, and we'll go from there. Okay, um, so in 2017, um, I had just done some counseling and um, started my walk back with the Lord. I'd kind of gotten away for a while, and um, I I just kind of started started talking with Him a little bit more and heading in the right direction. And then all of a sudden, like. I was just drawn to the JFK assassination and stuff like that and the book of Enoch and all this stuff that I didn't know was linked. And I tried to talk to some friends about it. And obviously it wasn't very well received. Um, and so I kind of hit my snooze button, went back to sleep. Well, I saw some stuff about the children in 2020 and couldn't go, couldn't change course after that. Um, and I've been on a deep dive, just searching for the truth. Um, and it's been a, a wild journey. Um, the first, first nine months or so was, man, very emotionally um, difficult. And I think uh, once, once people learn um, what's actually been going on, if they don't already or have an idea, um, it's, it's going to shock some folks. So, um, so I just went down this path and, you know, had, had some spiritual things happen to me that, um, could only be uh, the, the Holy Spirit. And God's just kind of been leading me ever since. And um, I think the biggest, biggest step for me was giving up full control, admitting that for 40, 40 years or whatever that I had just um, <laughs> tried to do it my way. And that wasn't working out. It was like, the more I tried, the harder it was. And, the more darkness I walked through. And finally, I just gave everything up and said, God, I, I failed so bad. And I just want you to take over. And it was like, I just got in the passenger seat and I haven't even thought about taking the wheel ever since. And it's just been, you know, it's not like it's all easy by any means and going through spiritual warfare and that type of stuff, that stuff's real. And most people don't really think about that or consider it or think it's too far out there I don't know you know just depends on the person but um two years ago I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have believed a lot of this stuff I was I was in the matrix so to speak mm -hmm. as they say um yeah. so so yeah I've been exploring this the uh spiritual side of things um energies and uh, uh you know the Nikola, Nikola Tesla frequency vibration that type of stuff and just looking within and, and healing myself in the last year just based on following um, my intuition or you know my my connection to source um, being able to kind of um, connect with with him so that's this that's a short version a very very short version of that and if you'd like to know it if you'd like me to speak on any other things um, in particular, then I'd be happy to share those. Awesome. No, I know. I appreciate you sharing that, you know, and 
we hear some of these terms get thrown around a lot, like, you know, waking up or awakening. And, you know, ultimately, uh, you touched on a real, a, a few really good points that I want to speak on real quick. It's also, it's ultimately death. And this is a word that people are scared of. This is the primal fear is death, right? Dying. But there's a difference between dead and death. Death is a transition into something else, meaning a level of consciousness. My dog saying hi. Um, and that's what when someone, quote unquote, starts to wake up, right? They're, they're recognizing um, higher patterns of reality, what's going on in reality, their environment and what's going on inside them. It is a death, right? You're not the same after you 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 start going down that journey and taking in that information. So it's a death of a, uh, of a level of consciousness. And, you know, this is why the social engineers, hi Dixie, the social engineers, um, they, they call the masses the dead, right? Being dead means you don't have spirit within you activated, you know, walking with spirit. So, very i like to define terms and, and kind of dive into that so and another thing you said that uh inspired me was um so walking with the lord getting in that flow state right so there's many different terminologies but being in Ooh. harmony with that which is which i call absolute truth god nature these are frequencies that we can tap into and we are, you know, hitting the truth more frequently. So that gives us a, a the natural vibration, if you will, of, of nature. So that's really cool. You touched on those things. Um, and it's definitely a breaking down. And I mean, as a lot of people know, when they start trying to communicate to other people, uh, it, it's tough, right? This comes with the territory of being ostracized um, called crazy and all this kind of stuff. But, um, when you, when you have self love and self respect and you are closer to the creator, to that vibration, it is spiritual armor in my opinion. Yeah, ab absolutely. It is. Um, I guess that would be a good time for me to throw in another uh, portion of what happened to me. So <clears throat> I was watching uh, Jake Angley uh, or Jake Chansley, also known as the QAnon shaman um, video, uh, Super Soldiers. And I opened my mind up in that video because the video is out there as far as what we're meant to believe is possible. And most people would, you know, um, hear something like that and just go, yeah, this dude's cuckoo, you know? And <clears throat> well, I just opened my mind and said, you know what? God created all of this. So I feel like he's capable of doing anything. So I'm just going to expand my mind for it to be possible. And when I did that, like halfway through that video, I, just, I felt the Holy Spirit come into my heart. And it was like beating out of my chest, like in a like cartoon-like um, and all I could feel was unconditional love. It was like, it, words, can't, words can't do it justice, what I felt. And that is when things shifted big for me. The, you know, the first big thing was giving up the full control. And that was in October of 2020. And then, uh, no, 2021. Yeah, 2020. And, um, Sorry, it's like Groundhog Day over here. Uh, <laughs> that, dude, that, that's like a tactic they use. Uh, you yeah. mentioned the Matrix, right? In the, in the, the new Matrix movie, it's all about um, distorting perception of time, you know, space time. So it's like, and, and the last, you know, since 2019 to 2022, I mean, you know, it's all just a blur. It's, you know, it's so I totally understand. I thought it was like supposed to be two weeks, but anyhow. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, they keep moving the goalpost back. So yeah. every time, classic move. So once that happened for me in December, I started, I mean, my mind just expanded on everything. And I, I changed my um, 
my search for the truth on a current events level to a higher, um, higher, I don't know, a higher realm dimension or um, just open possibilities um, of the unknown, I guess, so to speak. And, and then things just really just took off for me then. And it's like, I don't, I've, I've just like a lot of us people in this movement, we lost a lot of friends and family throughout this, um, at least temporarily speaking. And it has not been hard, but at the same, or, I mean, it, it has, it has been very hard. Um, but at the same time, it's like, if it was the, the right thing to do, it usually is the hard thing. So, um, I, I know in my heart with absoluteness that this is the Holy Spirit. This is our creator. And it's, it's something more than we're told to believe the system is not going to teach us this. So, yeah, <laughs> that's a fact. That's one thing that society mainstream society, what we've been taught, everything is the inverse from history to science to, I mean, everything, who we are, what we are, what we're capable of, what nature is, you know, it's, it's all been, it's all been twisted and, uh, and you know, the, the truth is out there ready to be discovered and talking about perspective. We have this on the let the list also look, looking at perception. It's our, it's our job as human beings to know ourselves, to align our perception with that which is, which is truth. Um, the, you know, the divine will, the divine intention, whatever you want to call it, um, objective truth, it's out there and it's our job to uh, align our perception with that so we can see clear. Absolutely. Yeah, perception, man. My perception has changed so much from the current events stuff and we we discussed this briefly before but there's um i don't know if this is the exact way to put it but i can ex explain it to where people can understand it there's two parts of this awakening and the the spiritual awakening does not happen without the current events wait, uh, awakening uh, and so once i got past the current events once the spiritual stuff started happening it's like Man, I was already an outcast before. <laughs> and so, so anyways, my, my thought process changed to, you know, being upset with friends and family for not listening or for getting upset with me for bring, saying these things that need to be talked about that are, make people uncomfortable. Uh, and it's changed my perspective to the spiritual of, well, all this stuff had to happen for me to learn enough lessons to open my mind up to really start to see the picture the way that the way that it's supposed to be seen and um, that's where I'll, I'll go into intuition when my intuition started really taking off is the day that I admitted that I didn't know anything and I'm talking current events to like I think, I, like, I have an I idea. I can put things in certain spots, but that's just what they want us to see. So, you know, what's, what's really real here? And I think the true test is the spiritual, that spiritual level. Um, <clears throat> and that's where that intuition kicks in is uh, back to one of your points. You said everything has all been twisted, like it's upside down. And that's how I started looking at things with, you know, the mainstream media and I, you start to see their playbook and you start to, to understand how they work and how they think. And it's like, okay, this is what they're trying to get you to. So we need to start looking over here mm. or it's the opposite of what you want, but not all of it. They, they mix enough truth in there. That, you know, people aren't going to believe a hundred percent lies. It's they mix a majority of, of truth in there and then they throw in those few little things that they want to get you on and then they they can they just continue that it goes on and on it's been going on for 
thousands of years. <laughs> That's right. Absolutely. And they do do that. They sprinkle in truth. So it, it resonates with people just enough. And then they pack all the lies and the obfuscation on top of it for sure. Um, and you know, you're right. You, you have to, it's kind of starts with the current events or maybe some past event that has happened. It's like when you, when you start to, um, bring awareness to what's going on, you kind of start in the, the smaller, the current events, the smaller, um, areas, and then you expand your awareness to the bigger, deeper picture. And you go, and you go to the, you know, the spiritual side of things, because this ultimately is a spiritual realm, you know, the, the spiritual and the physical are one and the same. The physical is just the, the symptoms, the manifested uh, effect of the cause, the, the sp uh, spiritual, the metaphysical, the energetic, you know, whatever you want to call it. But um, so, and this, yeah, and you're right. This is a spiritual war. So, and acceptance is a huge part. Um, I'm sure we're going to get into healing in a little bit, but having acceptance that some people are not, aren't, aren't ready to, to dive into these type of topics and they might not be ready this lifetime, you know, maybe next, but you know, it's, I mean, I've, I've beat my head against the wall trying to get family and friends. And it seems like yeah. family and friends are the hardest to try to get their attention, try to influence, um, or, you know, to, to raise awareness. Um, I think they, they kind of just see you as they already have their, own perceived image of you so when you yeah. change it's they they don't let that go and ah you know like that's just will it's the crazy crazy kid as always <laughs> so yep. <clears throat> yeah. yeah absolutely on the family thing i think you know i've had to kind of cut off um family gatherings because i'm i i bit my tongue for 18 months and it just was, it wasn't good for me. And so I had to stop doing that. And I'm, I'm not upset with them. Um, but when I'm, when I'm able to speak open and freely and not have to censor my own thoughts, which was 90, 95% of my thoughts, because I, I, I just, I'm seeing the world in a different way than I did before. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I love my family and I'm not angry with them. Um, I'm thankful for their part and their role in my journey and they're on their own and I'm not judgmental because there's, there's only one judge and um, I'm not him. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I try not to judge people um, and just, I've learned to be more empathetic to what they're going through and understanding how they feel and why they feel that way. But also, you know, you mentioned healing. We'll just go ahead and get into that. Healing is, we're so caught up on looking outside for things that make us happy or um, bring us joy that is not true. It's only temporary. Um, or on the other side of the spectrum, placing blame. Uh, it's it, our egos are you know, they're, they're just, they've deceived us through all this programming. And that's something that we have to learn to shed. We have to start looking in the mirror uh, and, and working within. And I think that's the part of perspective is rather than looking out, we need to start looking in. And then you you start to see the world in a different way. You know, you start to appreciate the lessons that were painful rather than um, getting being angry with them because then you can't you can't move past them you can't mm -hmm. continue to get to that next level um, and it really is just about self all you can control is yourself and show people the fruit you bear by your actions and your words I've, I've learned to have to take deep breaths and um, make sure you use the correct words because they do matter and speaking kindly and gently to people, uh, which most people like the, the family we we're talking about, jump kind of kind of circling around through that, is they don't know who I am right now. 
and that's okay. They will one day, but but if I was to hang out with them, they would expect that person. That person is um, far removed, uh, as far as does not have center stage anymore. All those different parts of me, um, you know, that that would set my temper off or whatever, or make me say something that I didn't want to do, or just speak quickly and be witty rather than listen and breathe and and think about what is the best way to approach you know your next sentence that you're going to say to somebody yeah no i I can completely relate to that i know my close childhood friends and and my family um we all get along and and i have compassion i think compassion is really important for um you know anybody that's incarnated in this time um but they yeah they don't know me as well you know they say i totally relate with you on that they have no idea who i am now that's because you're right the the work is done internally um you know if if you're going to change yourself it starts in the mind and then from there your emotions and your actions we need to as we think so we feel and then we act in that order um but most people don't even start that process so therefore they don't even see change in other people um so yeah it's it's definitely a fine line but uh i think yeah having having compassion um and i don't mean being uh, a pacifist you know what i mean but standing up standing up for what's right what's moral and um but you know having compassion for their their journey and trying to be there for them for assistance and let that be known because obviously using our words are extremely powerful the universe is spoken into existence so the words that we use carry vibration and then this can you know as as we're all co-creators in this reality we influence um others as well so using our words our speech is very important so yeah absolutely yeah the the energies and the all that and it's real but you got to feed that good wolf and then put that energy out into the universe i've throughout all my all my um just work that i've been doing i've i've learned to not let others bring my energy down i'll I'll radiate what i want to radiate with love and if if they're not feeling it, then they'll, they'll just vibrate away, which is okay for now, you know, I mean, or maybe for good, um, but I'll always be here. I'm just, I don't want to go back to who I was before with the, you know, the lower vibrational negative fear stuff. Like fear is, it's, it's so powerful and people, I, I just, I can't believe the psychological warfare, um, is, is just in so full effect and out in the open now. Oh, um, yeah. And it's just, you're just rooting for these people that think that you're the enemy. You're just rooting for them to wake up. And that's why I keep putting the current event stuff out because there's that stepping stone to mm-hmm. where we're ultimately trying to get. And um, I'm, I've been over that for nine months and I still put it out. That's part of what I do. And God has been just giving me different things to do, connect, trying to connect with, with other people that may be out there and going through a hard time because they're, they're feeling alone because they've lost friends and family as well. Just trying to connect with those people and, and um, learn about their journeys and whatnot. So I've met some, I've met some very fascinating and unique individuals and made some, some real good friends um just because i didn't have anybody else that i could talk to um it's almost like it's almost like i we speak different languages now or i speak a different language than i spoke before rather um maybe both i don't know <laughs> definitely both i think i would say uh you know that and that's one positive that that's coming out of this whole situation is that um the tyranny and the the warfare was very um, covert 
for for many years right and now it's it's coming out it's it's more overt it's right there on the surface so we are you know both sides are speaking different languages you're either you know promoting freedom and working towards freedom and love or it's fear tyranny and enslavement it's what's going on and these are two different two different worlds two different paradigms yeah and uh sure. right it's so it's, it's wild. it is wild it definitely is wild um a lot of things that i focus on and my partner john on natural freedom league we try to get down to the causal factors of it's really good to recognize those patterns in current events and the social engineers they're so good at what they do right i mean on the surface it just seems like you know they're dumb how can you can't how can people can't see these people they lie all the time they're just they're dumb and they're so you know they they're so blatant but behind the curtain the people that are really calling the shots these social engineers they have the deep knowledge uh of the psycholo the psychological realms the human mind and the laws of nature and how it <clears throat> operates so we get down to the causal factors it's good to ask why and like you said earlier it starts with the mirror right yeah it definitely yeah. starts with the mirror and that's how my journey started going through bad really bad drug addiction and um i was in the music industry and it kind of it seemed like i just fell into this hole but what it did and i'm extremely grateful for it is it made me look in the mirror and ask why why am i here why am i doing this you know and start to really dive into my own the inner workings of my own psyche and then that just from there it, that just expanded to you know outside of me yeah. so i started looking at reality and stuff but um so yeah there's you know forgiveness for yourself and forgiveness is almost a two-way street even though you can forgive other people without them saying you know they're sorry right, right. You, you, so you're not holding that resentment in and, and that's important um maybe you want to touch on a little bit about forgiveness or yeah absolutely i mean it's it does not serve you and why why do it it doesn't make sense and i'm talking to myself i had to, i've i've done this work um i had to look at myself and be like dude what are you doing like the the system my mind had been consciousness had been captured and i'm starting to think things that i wasn't i was a good kid i mean i had my my uh, fair share of uh you know bad decisions um like the rest of us but I was a good kid and then all of a sudden my mindset started to change um you know college and on and it's you gotta let that stuff go it's not gonna serve you so yeah forgive others forgive yourself um a, a lot of times we we ask god for forgiveness um uh, and we forget the important stuff step to forgive ourselves we still have moments where certain things uh from the past come up and they make us feel like crap and then we have these thoughts like oh you're a terrible person you're not worthy of this or that or whatever and that's just that's just satan that's just uh you know the snake with his forked tongue uh, mm -hmm. putting that doubt and fear in our mind because that's his that's his best weapon but we don't, it doesn't have to be that way we can choose to forgive ourselves forgive others and love ourselves truly look in the mirror and love what's looking back at you and when you can learn to do that it's like god made me who i am and took me through my journey showed me what i needed to see i needed to go through the darkness so that i could understand how bright my light can shine um, and that's why i think a lot of us that have had these things happen at least the ones that i've, I've been speaking with um, have have come to a point where they've been broken they've admitted admittedly come to a spot where they were broken 
and they just decided, okay, I, I, I'm done. I want, I want something else. There's got to be something more than this. And they start, start looking to, you know, to the creator um, and, and within and trying to heal themselves. And it's, man, it's, it's so amazing to feel what I feel now after all the years of, of anger and resentment uh, for things that may not have worked out in my past, which now that I look at it from a different perspective, they worked out exactly how they were supposed to. <laughs> so, you know, God knew, God knew what I was going to do before and he already knows what I'm going to do moving forward now. Um, but I'm on the right track now. Um, I, I, I got off for a while, some, some detours, like, <laughs> like a lot, like a lot of us. Yeah. Oh no, for sure. Yeah. Some, um, and that's how it goes, right? We need, you know, pain and suffering is the ultimate teacher and that, you know, we can use our inner light to, um, to dispel the darkness, but that is an internal process. And the social social engineers are feeding off people because they don't know this information, right? It's like they keep them internally confused. So they, they look out for external control and they turn to, you know, government institutions and, you know, the, that's the, the fallacy, the good old fallacy, the appeal to authority. Well, it's a doctor. So I'm just going to listen to that person, you know, like, and then, so they're externalizing, looking for the answer when in reality, the work is done within them. And, uh, you know, there's, there's some good steps. Uh, I'm very much into the, the mystery traditions um, and the process of initiation, which means beginning um, is number one, stop lying, right? To others and to yourself huge huge step and that's that's so true that's where it's that's where it starts you have to stop lying to yourself and to others and then um and be honest with yourself and and look look deep in in those dark alleys recesses of the mind and and start to do that work so. yeah yeah so um the uh let's see where we Okay, so you're talking about looking within, and then I have written above it, be still. And when the when the the Holy Spirit came into me, and all these other spiritual things happened that you know before my mind wouldn't have been able to compre comprehend were possible. Um, it, I started looking within and and searching, trying to figure out what that energy was. I knew it was the Holy Spirit, but like what what it was for and what I could do with it. And, um, you know, I, I did a little bit of digging on, on shamanism and then came across Reiki and Reiki healing. And then, uh, and I'm thinking, okay, maybe, maybe this energy stuff that I'm feeling in my hands, maybe I can use it to heal. And so my dog got injured and um, this had happened before usually it takes him three or four days to be able to put all of his weight back on a leg uh, and he, he couldn't put it down at all uh, so I'm like all right so that night we were out that evening and then that night I <clears throat> practiced some Reiki on him um, just meditation and um, at least that's what I called it at the time but um, healing from from uh the counselor, or, uh, you know, Christ consciousness, whatever. Um, a lot of people get caught up on the labels. Uh, I'm unsure. I just know it's from, from God, our creator. Mm -hmm. And um, so I did it for like 10, 15 minutes. And then uh, the next morning he put weight on his foot and was just barely limping, which was uh, a lot faster progress than it had been before. So I brought him right back in and did it again. And he didn't, he, he was just like full go after that. And I was like, at that point, I was like, okay. Um, so then I, I started reaching out to other people um, and telling people, and I've, you know, done some meditation, um, Christ consciousness or connection to source. 
um, stuff with them on just passing healing energies through. And um, so the looking within is, is important, but being still, and I'm going to kind of connect that to um, uh, one of these uh, friends of mine that I've met throughout this journey said something to me when we were having a talk, said, praying is talking to God and meditation is listening. Mm. And being still, talking to God during meditation and just kind of looking within and forgetting every, anything outside of your body um, helps you to connect to our creator because he has left a slice of him inside of us. And so that's why it's so important that we don't look out. We need to look within because that's where, that's where I believe probably the, the most important thing that we're searching for is, uh, at least in my experiences thus far. Absolutely. Yeah, I would agree with that 100% for sure. Uh, you know, the word meditation means bring to the center, bring to the middle. And it's also called the middle path, right? Where you're, you're, you're being, you're being, you're clearing your mind. So uh, both hemispheres of the brain are normalized and on the same frequency and, and they're, they're still, and that's where we can, you know, activate and listen to the subconscious um, or some people, you know, the, the voice of God or the creator, which, you know, I'm really big into natural law, and one of the principles of natural law is um, the law of correspondence, as above, so below, meaning that human beings are a, the microcosmic of the macro. So, you know, it's like the universe is holographic. So, um, and then the first principle is mentalism, the mind. So if God is mind, the small, the, ho the hologram, the human being, the center is mind as well. The source is mind. So absolutely, we can touch into these these abilities. And um, we had a lady on last night uh, that, I mean, she does channeling, remote viewing, Reiki, astrology, tarot. She, use, she utilizes all these skill sets. Ultimately, what it's doing is just using energy and using her mind and, and communication with the, with the creator and the, you know, the natural forces that are around us. So it's fascinating. Yes, yes, it is. And, and uh, you know, and any, this is like an, an inherent ability anyone can tap into when you start building it up and practicing. Yes, and, and to kind of um, piggyback on top of that, um, the energies uh, in healing are there, but it's not surely just the, the work, work with someone else. It's also you got to work on yourself and sometimes just talking about things and trying to understand why you why you feel so upset about them well you know we've dealt with a lot of traumas in our lives so we got to rather than packing those deep down and not talking about them we got to get them to the surface so that they don't um wait continue to weigh us down um and just just be able to, to speak about them and it's okay understand them um, and then we can heal from them um, but i i know just I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of others that can relate but i did not deal with things emotionally you know i got caught up in the you know you're if you're a guy and if you're you're soft if you you know you're emotional or whatever and and that's it's so wrong um, we need to be able to have deeper talks than um, what we're taught to. Um, and that's that, that's that middle, the centering or whatever that you're talking about is we yeah. need balance. We need to find, guys need to find a way to um, get in tune with their, with their feelings more and understanding them a little bit more. Um, and um, same goes for women too. You know, we're, we're, we all need to just balance and we have certain things that we can bring to the table too that can help um, help us balance as well just as, a, as humanity uh, between men and women so absolutely we're, we're pinned against each other at every 
every which way. It's it's just sad to see. It's it's painful. There's a lot of us out there that this this hurts to see society that it is the way that it is nowadays with with the hatred and the division. And we just for those of you that don't don't understand us yet, we just want we just want to get on the same page. We want the truth. We want our freedoms. We want to stand together. We want to love one another, regardless of skin color or beliefs. And we want to be able to talk openly and freely. And we don't want those um, parameters around us, the, the bars and the cages that the, the societal norms um, has, has gotten us to fall for. And we just need to be free. We're made uniquely by God, our creator for a reason where we don't, we're not meant to be put in these categories. And then if, if you're not in there, then, then you're being attacked or you're, you're an outsider or whatever. We just all need to be free and get along and love, even, even if we don't agree on stuff. Absolutely, man. Well said, dude, you touched on so many good points. Um, just rolling off with, with freedom, right? I mean, freedom to me, and I'm doing a presentation on this too. So this will be like a teaser. Um, you know, freedom is the creator to me. It's is evolution. It's love. Um, it, you know, it rep the creator represents freedom, right? And then if you look at it as, you know, you want to say Satan or the involution, it's the contracting and the encapsulating. It's the opposite force of creation. Um, and it's just, people don't know this on a deep level. They still, the, the conditioning and the programming just goes so deep, you know, like freedom. Oh, they're just, it, the government gives us freedoms, you know, <laughs> human beings cannot have authority over other human beings. This is a birthright of sovereignty that we are endowed with from the creator. This is our natural state as human beings. Every life form on this planet strives for freedom, right? In a process of working in harmony with, with nature. And we are of nature as well. So we're part of this process. Um, you know, we're just a, a higher level of consciousness um, and a deeper level you know, endowed with deeper spirit and soul, we're almost um, stewards of this, this reality, and, and these beings. So, you know, working in harmony with each other, unity is so, so important. And you talked about, you know, male and female, you know, we even we all have masculine and feminine characteristics inside of us, gender is another law of nature. So that's why it's so important to to get those balanced, the the alchemical wedding of un, uh, unifying the, the masculine and feminine energies, whether you're male or female, you know, they're, they're both at play. And that's where the balance comes in. And that's the middle path. And then we see that's the micro, we see it in the macro, right? Where actual, you know, physical genders, male and female. And this is an allegory in the matrix uh, four as well, right? You have Neo and Trinity. When they're together, they're an unstoppable force. They become one. The two become one. So, and, you know, with all the programming and conditioning, the, the gender wars, um, it's just, it goes so deep. And only those with the eyes to look, right? We need to activate the seeker and really dive in. Um, I struggled a long time when I started doing talks and trying to get information because I felt like I wasn't reaching people. But what I realized is that people were finding me. And that made it, I started to see like, oh, that's what it's about. It's about speaking truth, seeking truth and speaking truth. And those that are ready will come to you. And you know, like minded individuals will, will come together. Uh, it's that strong magnetism that just unites us. And, um, and, and that's what it's all about, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the the finding me part. So um, we had mentioned healing some. So for for the past year um, and maybe two or three weeks, I've been I've been looking within. I've been doing the work, um, and God has been showing me what to do by you know 
the intuition that you just it's like you're tapped into god's consciousness and you just know things and you don't know how you know you just know them and um i'm i've been working with folks but i've been reaching out for to them and you know most of my I haven't known them before this. So it's, it's hard because, you know, there's a lack of trust out there and rightfully so. Uh, a lot of people have agendas and I just want to help people heal because I know where I was and I know where I'm, in, where I'm at now. And I want that for others because we're going to have a lot of healing to do. Um, this, this is a, a psychological war and there's going to be a lot of uh, damage and people are going to need help. And, um, so that's another main reason why I think God connected us. And when I say God through, through a friend as well, a um, very dear friend. Um, and it's, it's just like, things are just happening when they're supposed to happen for me now without, you know, me having any wants. Like I just want what, what God wants. I don't want my wants anymore. Those, those weren't working. God, just show me what you want for me. And then things just happen. And it's like, um, but I, I want this. I didn't initially want to be, you know, speaking and have my face out there. I never thought that would be me two years ago when I was watching others do that. And, uh, you know, it seems like I've, I've been through this journey long enough where God connected us for a reason. And um, I can I can say uh, what I mean well enough because I've been in the war long enough and, and God just kind of gives me the words to say because I'm just the messenger. I don't want any credit. I don't want to be in the spotlight, but I think it's time. And so now hopefully I'll be able to help more people that are interested in what I have to say because I can, I believe I can help anyone heal. Um, I can't heal them myself, but I can um, show them the process I went through and kind of be a little bit of a of a guide to bounce stuff off but it, the, the work is up to them you can only do the work yourself and i think that's that's where a lot of people um struggle is fully letting go you know it's like the pain one thing i I've, I've said uh to the people all of the people that i've um working with at one point is have you had enough pain or would you like more? You know, I, I don't like to have to say that, but that's what I had to say to myself. And finally, I just said, okay, I've had enough, God, this mm -hmm. <laughs> white flag, it's all you take it. And we've been running ever since. And, um, but people, they, they'll give up a lot of things, but they don't want to give up their certain things. They want to hang on to control because we're being controlled. <laughs> And we have so little control of stuff in our lives that we want to hang on to whatever we can, but it's not, it's not about that. That's only an illusion. That's only part of the illusion. So hopefully this will allow others to come find me that are ready. Uh, Cause I, you know, I message random people that are putting out the same type of stuff on Facebook. And a lot of times I don't get responses you know, or they'll say something, but then kind of uh, not respond after that. And it's like, I'm just out here fishing and um, trying to be a fisher of man. And um, sometimes I get a bite and, um, and I'm, I love hearing about people's journeys. I've, there's a lot of people that have gone through traumas that are out there um, and I'm experiencing that stuff with them and it's painful, but I think I think it's, um, I'm, God wants me to be experiencing this with them so I can help them through it. Cause there's a lot of things that people are going through that I'm like, oh, I've been through something that I can relate or that exact thing. And I know how to navigate this. And so you just try to help. And if they want to listen, um, they can listen. It's not, it's not like magic or anything. It's just mm -hmm. literally just working on yourself and what you put in your mind and what you put out into the universe. And um, it, there's so much more to God than you know just the Bible and the church. And I do believe um, that it's, it's a hard topic to talk about with 
um, people, you know, that are, that are religious people, they consider themselves religious people. Um, because I think that was all done to divide us, just like the rest of all of this. Um, are there, I think there's a lot of good things in, in Christianity, but I'm not sure they're telling us the whole story. I'll just say it at that. Um, I think there's been a lot left out. And, you know, if all this other stuff is going on around us that are, you know, the lies are coming out, why would it be so crazy to think that it might not have gotten into the church too? Um, that's all I'm going to say for now. It's not, you know, it's an uncomfortable conversation for, for people to have. Um, and my family is those people and I love them to death and their hearts are so in the right spot. I just wish they would open up their minds a little bit more because there's more to this. This the spirituality thing is undeniable. <laughs> and yeah. I there's no chance I will ever go in any other direction now. And I've never had something like that that I've been driven through or been passionate about outside of you know my my baseball career, but it's it's so above and beyond the baseball career yeah. that <laughs> then uh this I always thought the baseball career was you know what what my purpose was in life and then <laughs> that ended and it was like just in a tailspin and trying to figure out where i fit in in the world and then now i'm recognizing the, the baseball and a lot of my other past experiences um have been leading me up to this war and so yeah, yeah. very very wild how, how everything uh, seems to connect yeah, you recognize the patterns in, in the past, right? And it's like, ah, it makes sense. Yes, yes, there was a rhyme and a reason, right? A cause for the effect and vice versa. Um, yeah, man, I, I I love I love your energy and your message. Um, I really hope people share this video and people reach out and connect with you. And I also hope that you start thinking about maybe doing videos or a podcast expanding your voice because you have you have a phenomenal message i definitely see you as a facilitator for healing like you said no one no you can't heal other people they have to do it themselves but yet we do need people in this in this time and guidance facilitators support is really important uh in the beginning of all this uh uh, all the BS that's kind of going on in the world, the pandemic and stuff. Uh, I reached out to some people in some Facebook groups and we started a support group and that was two years ago. And now we're putting together a conference and we've supported each other through this time. Um, all like-minded individuals help uplift each other. And now we're, you know, turning that energy into action to create something like a conference that we're doing. So, we do need people and um i love everything that you got going on man it, it's great so i hope you keep going stick with it i know you will yeah thanks so much for having me on brother it's been uh, amazing um i just i just want to live in love and, and be love and things can be so much better than than what they are right now and um those of you that are struggling just hang on, um, make it to the finish line. The finish line is soon. I don't know what soon is. I don't have any dates. I don't do that um, anymore. I was fooled by that early on. And, uh, <laughs> that always gets us at some point. I've yeah. gotten got by that a few times. Yeah, I got, got it. Yeah. But, um, it's going to happen in God's time and he's never early, nor is he late. Um, and so we just, we just walk in faith and try to connect with one another and try to share the truth and finding that duality of of uh love and light and warrior <laughs> um you know because it's it's not easy to um to be treated the, the way that a lot of us are just for having different beliefs um uh man it's it's a wild time and a wild ride and i'm so lucky and blessed to have been uh connected with you and invited on here and, and thank you very much Oh, it's my pleasure, man. My pleasure for sure. I'm definitely grateful to to connect with you. And uh, yeah, I mean, you, you said it, you said it perfect at the end, right? And it takes action. Most important, we got to transmute our healing and 
that self-knowledge, which has been a big theme of, of this, this conversation, and turn that into action and stand up for what's right. And um, yeah, man, it's great. Thanks for coming on, dude. I appreciate hey, can it. I, can I do one last thing? Absolutely. Yeah, it's okay. share. Uh, let people know how they can get a hold of you. There we go. Um, can you see that? Yeah, Boomer Barry on Facebook. Look him uh, up. Boston Terrier, that's Rupert. And then I coach baseball uh, with Clutch Performance Academy. I'm holding it, holding uh, the KC area on lockdown. So um, awesome. if you want to, you know, add me as a friend, follow me. Um, I, I'm more interested in connecting with folks like on a one on one, uh, have phone conversations or whatnot, even, uh, you know, face to face. Um, just hearing about people's journeys and, um, and picking each other's brains and getting to know one each other. So that's that's me. Give me give me a holler if you're interested. And uh, God bless, love and light. Awesome, man. Yeah, we'll put the uh, the links in the description of this video too, so it'll make e uh, you know make it easy for people to get a hold of you. And uh, if anybody wants to check out my work, my website is naturalfreedomleague.com. And uh, Boomer, thanks, brother. I really appreciate it, man. Thanks a lot. Signing off. All right. You guys take care. Thanks.